You know, I think, and I'm gonna take a big huge leap of faith here, but I think that when we're all really young, that we have this inner self that we feel is huge, and it gets pummeled down, and you're not even sure that it ever existed at a certain point. And then all of a sudden, if you do work like this, and you're by yourself and you're making this work, that's what you're connecting with, and that's what's kind of, that's what you trust to make the decisions. I think the first thing my dad got me some pastels when I was maybe nine or 10. So I started rendering from that and he was interested in art even though he never got to do that. So then he gave me paints and so I just started from that. It was kind of blindly, you know, not in touch with anything, just blindly trying to work with materials and learning about process. That's all it was. When I first decided I had to force myself to become abstract, um, I actually was up at Cambridge once. They have a fog museum up there. They had this great postcard of Saul Witt, and I was like blown away at this yellow background. And I just like that, I've got to go do one of these. But it was inspiring. I think the first form I ever gave myself was a triangle. I said, okay, we'll work with upside down U shapes and triangulated forms and, uh, you know, work on paper. So those shapes then, you know, just it morphs. It morphs, there's something in that connection, you move that into the next piece and maybe it's smaller and contained, something like that. I prefer to work abstractly because there's no reference to anything in the real world. Plus there's no constraints. Recently what I've been doing is creating a ground first, and then sometimes I see something in the ground, like some sort of a relationship. It may be that a certain form starts to develop and I, go, and I kind of connect with it, and it's, you kind of connect back into yourself. I think most artists do that to some extent. And from that point, I try to create relationships to other things. So it's about the surface, it's about the edges, connecting to other edges, the shape, the size, the loaminess, you know, the texture. Sometimes um, if I feel like it became too much of a uh, familiar, too familiar as I was working it, you know, I'll, I'll sand it back. I don't want it to be totally familiar. I want to find something new each time I make something. And then I really like it and I'll stick with it. So sometimes I can scrape back what I have and uh, or sand it, and it's not just to get back to something underneath, it's to create something different, because you have these different uh, terrains, and when you sand them, one shows through from three layers down and maybe a little bit from the top layer, things like that. And I think the work is intentionally just about itself, you know, just about what's there on the surface. It's just really hard for me. I really struggle with painting. Painting's hard, but once I'm down there, it's the thought of going down and putting myself through that. It's really hard, but once I get myself down there, it's fine. I think it was always abstract in the way I thought about it. Like for instance, even when I was trying to learn how to paint, I thought, okay, now let's move on to lighting and let's like focus on that. And then it was, you know, my brush strokes were always kind of expressionistic and it was really abstract. I think I thought that way. And I was really interested in it. That's, I just felt I'd be comfortable in that world, and I am. Okay, what keeps people making art? I think what it is, is I think it reinforces your existence, don't you think? You know, I'm not supposed to be you. You're not there? <laughs> I'm here. Oh, wasn't there a book about that?